Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to install the motor onto the motor mount of our FT Tenant. Now this motor mount is pretty unique because you're able to change the thrust angle simply by unclipping the motor mount, rotate it 90 degrees and clipping it back in. Today we're gonna to show you how to mount the motor to the motor mount and also how to use a servo tester to get proper motor rotation. The materials we're gonna need for this is gonna be our motor mount, our motor and our ESC. The tools we're gonna to need are gonna be the servo tester, our battery and a screwdriver. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So this motor mount is specifically designed for our Power Pack A. With our Power Pack A motor, we're going to get lots of different options for screws. Now it's very important that we don't select screws that are too long for the motor or else we're going to damage the motor by driving the screw through the hole and into the windings. For this application here, the easiest way to tell is simply by taking the screws out. We'll go ahead and switch out to a 1.5 hex drive. The easiest way, whether it's working on this or any other firewall, to make sure that your screws aren't too long is to simply screw it in and make sure that it doesn't go past the metal here. The screws that we're going to want to use are going to be the shortest screws that are included in the pack. You can see we have the middle ones here. These are the shortest ones. We only need two screws to install our motor. Make sure you save the rest of them because it's always handy to have extra. You're going to notice that our motor mount has an angle to it. This is so we can change thrust angle simply by rotating 90 degrees. The easiest thing to do is to find the widest portion, basically where your motor is going to be angled up, and face that down towards the table. For mounting our motor, we're only going to use the wider two holes that are on our motor. Easiest way to install the motor is just pre-thread your screws so they pop up just ever so slightly. Line this up with the bottom one here and the top one. Just capture a couple threads on one and then go to the other one. Make sure that both screws are threaded in before tightening it down. There we go. You're also going to notice that our motor comes with two different nut options. We have a lock nut for pressure configuration, and we also have the spinner nut. Whichever one you choose is completely fine. I oftentimes like holding on to my lock nut and then using the spinner nut. Now that we have our motor attached, our next step is, is we're going to clip it onto our main motor mount. This motor mount is going to be what slides into our fuselage, whether it's a tractor configuration or a pusher configuration. A little rocking motion is all we need, and they'll clip right into place. Now keep in mind that this is 3D printed. If it sticks a little bit, you can always sand it down just a little bit to make sure it slides in. What you do want to make sure is that it slides in all the way so this detent on this far side catches it so it can't slide out. Anytime we want to change the thrust angle, we simply slide out the motor. We can get left thrust, right thrust, down thrust, or up thrust. Now that we have our motor installed, let's connect our ESC. With our ESC connected to the three bolts on the motor, we do not need to worry about which order we put those three bolts in. If we need to change the rotation of the motor, all we simply need to do is switch any two of the three leads and it'll automatically make the motor spin the opposite direction. Now that we have our motor and our ESC connected, we're gonna attach our ESC lead, making sure that the signal wire and the ground wire line up with the pins. It's also important when we're testing the motor, make sure on this specific servo tester that we're plugging into the outside of the servo tester to make the motor operate. Now that we have everything plugged in, we're going to add our battery to the connector. And with it in manual mode and turned all the way down, we can now increase the throttle and it will make our motor run. Now the direction we want this to go is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is very important because it will naturally make this nut spin tighter. Now anytime that you're in a pusher configuration, keep in mind that you can either switch the prop out or you can change your motor direction. Just make sure that you have it plenty tight or else the prop may accidentally spin off. I generally find that unless I crash, I have no problem with the nut staying onto the prop. So you can see that this moves counterclockwise. This is the direction we want. If we wanted to make it go the other direction, we switch any two of the three leads and now when we throttle up, it goes the other direction. And that's exactly what happens to the prop nut when it spins clockwise. So now we're spinning clockwise. I'm just going to convert this one last time back to counterclockwise and then reinstall my spinner. Now you notice that we never put our props on until we're ready to fly the airplane. This is something you always want to do whether you're working on the build table or when you're building a new airplane. Don't put your prop on until just before you're ready to take it out and fly for the first time. There we go. 
Now that everything's working properly, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my battery, disconnect my servo tester, and I'm gonna bring my fuselage in to show you how easy it is to put the motor onto the airplane. If you haven't already, use a utility blade to cut through the tape that's gonna be sealing off the slot that goes where your motor is. Now with this pusher configuration, it's gonna be very important that we have a little bit of up thrust in addition to the up thrust that's already on your motor mount. This is gonna give you just the right amount of up thrust to keep the airplane from pitching down too steep when you add throttle. Anytime you're flying a pusher airplane, make sure you always use the throttle very smoothly because they oftentimes have a tendency to tip down if you're really aggressive with it. And to change the thrust angle, and again, to change the thrust angle, all you need to do is slide it out and rotate it any angle you want to get right, left, up, or down thrust. This is exactly what we want right here, so we're good to move forward. There we go. To install the motor, it's very simple. We're just gonna line it up with the grooves that are cut in the foam. A little rocking motion's all you need, and center it up with the fuselage. For the pusher configuration, we're gonna use some Velcro, and we're gonna Velcro it right to the side of the fuselage like you see here, so that way the battery lead can lead it. The process for installing your motor and the tractor configuration is the exact same. All we're simply going to do is line this up, a little bit of rocking motion, and center it up with the fuselage. The grip of the foam is going to be plenty to keep it from sliding to the left or to the right. At this point, our motor is now done. We're going to move on to the next step in the build process of the FT-10. See you shortly.